Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be talking about the state of Alaska and a result that occurred on Tuesday night. I'll be releasing this video on uh, Friday, so a couple days, but I wanted some more time for the results to come in. I'm recording this uh, on Thursday night. So we've gotten more results, nearly 90% of the vote is in, and Mary Peltola at the moment, st still a few votes left to be counted, but she's going to finish with over 50% of the vote outright in this jungle primary. So in a primary where you have, you know, 10, 12 candidates, she got over half the vote. So she, not only did she win Democrats, because again, there were other Democrats in this race, or there were, you know, was one other Democrat, but not, you know, not only did Democrats come out and vote for her, but this is a state that voted for Trump by 10 points. That means that to get half the vote in Alaska, you know, Biden got, what, 43% of the vote here. She got over 50%. She won a good chunk of Republicans, too. So this is a good result for Democrats, but uh, more broadly, it's a good result for Mary Peltola. So in today's video, we'll be talking about what it means, what we can extrapolate from it, what we, what we cannot extrapolate from it, and what, you know, how this should shape our view of the uh, House election in this district, or in this state, rather, because this is a statewide race. Uh, in November. So the first thing I want to talk about is what we can't take away. Now, I've seen a lot of people using this as evidence that we're in a democratic wave environment, that Kamala Harris is, you know, on track to win. Maybe she's competitive in Alaska. Maybe she's only down by a few points. I don't agree with any of that. And the reason I don't agree with that is because Mary Peltola is a very strong Democrat. She is easily the most effective Democrat in the entire state of Alaska because she's the only Democrat to win a statewide race here uh, since really 2008. So uh, this is, again, a very sp specific case. A lot of voters in Alaska won't vote Democrat unless it's for Mary Peltola. And she's relatively new. She's only been a representative from Alaska for the past two years. So she first won in the August 16th special election. Um, initially, she actually got 39.7% of the vote in this election. But if you look at the ranked choice voting, that actually helped her. She ended up winning uh, after we had the third place candidate, Nick Begich the third eliminated. And enough of his voters broke for Peltola as their second choice to give her the victory in this race. Now, if we look at November 2022, it's a similar thing. She actually won by a lot more. So she got, once she was the incumbent, she really became popular here. She actually almost outright won without ranked choice voting. Because again, if you get 50%, there's no choice for them. There's no, you know, realistic reason for them to tabulate ranked choice voting. But she got 49% here. Nick Begich once again got third. He was eliminated. And so... Again, because Peltola already had such a large lead, it was essentially a foregone conclusion. But what did you see? Just enough baggage voters broke for, you know, Mary Peltola. And because she had that lead built up outright, because a lot of Alaskans outright just voted for her, she won pretty, you know, she won by 10 points in a state that is, you know, pretty Republican leading. This is a state Democrats don't usually do well in. And so now in 2024, it's 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 going to be uh, Lieutenant Governor Nancy Dahlstrom, Nick Begich, again, who's running for a third time. And then, obviously, Congresswoman Peltola. But this time, this is the first time in a primary where Peltola's gotten half the vote outright. If you look uh, in November 2022, she got pretty close. She got 49%, but she, she's actually doing a point better. And again, across Alaska in this primary, Democratic turnout was down. In other races, Democrats did not you know, do as well as they hoped to do. So Democratic turnout was down, but Republicans, independents, and the Democrats that did show up were very favorable to Peltola. So, again, strong candidate good for Democrats in terms of that House seat. But again, I wouldn't really advise anyone to draw conclusions from this. This doesn't really mean anything for Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris, we likely know, is not as popular as Peltola is as a Democrat in a state like Alaska. Um, again, you have to remember that Alaska is a state that will split its ticket. You, you know, Again, in 2008, for example, Barack Obama lost the state by like 15, 20 points, but it elected a Democrat to the Senate. That was the last year prior to Peltola. Democrats won a statewide race here. So Alaska likes to split its ticket, um, and it, it will give you weird results every now and then. Um, and so they're willing to vote Democrat for House, potentially. It looks like that's what they're willing to do, given that Peltola got over half the vote here. But again, for president, I'm not sure it really means much. And again, in um, in 2022, Peltola won by 10 points, and Alaska reelected a Republican governor pretty easily. So to me, this doesn't mean much. But uh, in terms of Kamala Harris or Democratic prospects nationwide, we can't really draw too many conclusions from this. This is not like the Washington primary where it's actually historically a good indicator of who's winning and who's not winning. But now let's talk about what we can take away. Well, the first thing that I noticed was, wow, Mary Peltola keeps getting more and more popular. Again, I'll remind you, 
when she first ran that special election in August 2022 to replace the late Don Young, who unfortunately passed away earlier that year, she got 39.7% of the vote. We can go back to that. I can show you on your screen right now. 39.7% of the vote. And it was close. We actually didn't... I remember watching this and being like, well, I don't know who's going to win between Palin and Peltola. It comes down to how the Nick Bakich voters split their ballots or you know wrote uh, who they wanted as their second choice. And just enough of them voted for Peltola to get her to 51.5%. Again, she... Uh, you know, Palin actually won more second choice from Nick Begich because, uh, because she was down by nine points and she only lost by three. But Peltola won enough to hold on to that lead. Then in November 2022, again, more Nick Begich voters did split f- or did write Palin for, 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 their, for their second choice. But again, it wasn't enough because Peltola had already got 49%. All she needed was a couple Begich voters to put her over the top. And she got more than enough. She got 55%. It wasn't close. So this year, again, she's starting out higher than she was in 2022. Again, it's a primary, not a general election, so turnout can vary. But again, 2022, she got under 49% of the vote. Now she's well over 50. So she's starting out even higher. And if in November we see, because it's going to be another three-way race. And again, as you can see here, this one basically was a three-way race. These other candidates, none of them got below a one, uh, you know, or uh, sorry, none of them got above 1%. So this functionally was a three-way race. And Peltola got 50%. The Republicans combined for around 47%, 3% undis- you know, voted for someone else. Even if you give every single one of these voters, and again, there were, there were Democrats in this race too. So even if you give every single one of these voters to the Republicans, they still wouldn't have beat Peltola. That's without even counting for ranked choice voting. Again, it's likely that like the previous two times, a good chunk of Nick Begich voters put Peltola as their second choice. And so what do we see? We see that, Pel- or that Peltola is very likely to win re-election in November. It's not a safe seat. Alaska's a red state. And uh, obviously, if Trump gets a huge rural turnout and wins the state by like 15, 20 points, I think Peltola could be in trouble. But Alaska's been left trending. Trump, you know, doesn't, I don't think he's that strong of a candidate for the state. Obviously, he'll win it by eight or nine points, but, um, you know, not a huge landslide. And also, again, Peltola, even if Trump wins the state, gets a big rural turnout, we see a lot of Republican voters are willing to vote for her outright or at least write her as their second choice. So she's very likely to win November. I think I'm, I'm leaving my house model next week. So for those of you waiting for an official house prediction, uh, I will do that very soon. Don't worry. But spoiler alert, this seat's going to be blue. P- Peltola, best performance so far of her career, and she's already won twice as a Democrat in a red state. So good showing for Democrats here. I wouldn't apply it nationally. I wouldn't say it's anything. It's definitely not bad for Kamala Harris, obviously, but I, I don't really think it shows anything that's good for her either. But in this specific House seat, Democrats are going to sleep a lot easier knowing that they are up by a lot here based on this jungle primary. And Republicans might see this and say, hey, look, if we couldn't even if, if we couldn't even get a majority with two candidates combining in our jungle primary, how are we going to win this race? Because even if Peltola got to 43 percent or 44 percent, surely enough baggage voters, just like the previous two times, would vote for her for a second. So Republicans didn't even get close to you know being competitive with Peltola. So they might see this and say, hey, look. We're not going to play here. We're going to go somewhere else. We're going to uh, target other House seats because we have a very easy path to the majority. We just got to win a couple seats, hold on to a couple seats. In Alaska, we didn't win it in 2022. We don't need to win it this time either. It hurts Republicans, but they might make that decision. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you expect to happen in this seat come November. Comment down suggestions below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next video.